Welcome back to Muse on the Mic. I'm Riley. And I'm Emily. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Muse on the Mic. We've got a really interesting one that's a little bit of a twist on some different stuff today. And I think it's going to be fascinating for the people to hear. We're going to love telling these stories. And Riley, why don't you tell the peeps what we're jumping into? <laughs> uh, we have a bit of like media that we just want to share with you guys. One um, topic is from Reddit that Emily's going to dive into. And one was a Twitter feed that I saw that I thought... It's a good conversation piece. So let's, we'll read them, chat about them. And if you guys want to comment down below, participate in the conversation with us, that would be awesome. I love it. I'm excited for this. This is going to be fun. This comes from Reddit, True Confessions. Title of the thread is, I went to a massage parlor and got a happy ending by accident a couple of days ago. So good. Okay, obviously a throwaway account because I'm embarrassed and don't want my friends to know. So he's writing anonymously. I'm a 32-year-old male and I've never had a massage before. This Wednesday, I pulled a muscle in my shoulder moving some shit over the weekend and someone said, oh, she got a massage. So I did some scouting around and found a place, made an appointment for our massage and went there. I was not intending a happy ending and didn't see anything to indicate that this service was available. Hilarious. A very small Asian woman massaged me, and it was amazing. It loosened up my shoulder. I felt so much better. However, while on my stomach, I started to get an erection, which we know is a common problem. Boy problems. However, while on my stomach, I started to get an erection, and in my defense, the massage felt amazing. He was very attractive. I was having kind of a dry spell and hadn't been with a woman in almost a year. I got super nervous, and she told me to roll over. So I did. I was eating a really obvious tent she covered me with. She giggled. Goodness, she giggled. I was probably red as a tomato. She rubbed my shoulders while I stayed erect. A little bit, she stopped. Started rubbing my thighs super close to it. The tease, man. It made me so excited. I was practically panting. And then she said in broken English, whispering in my ear, happy ending, $50. I was so nervous and aroused. I don't think I could speak. I just nodded. Yeah. <laughs> Please. She said, you have 20 minutes left. She took off my towel, put more lotion on her hands and grabbed it and started stroking it. She also rubbed and squeezed my balls. It was honestly the best hand job I've ever had. Probably five minutes was one of the most intense orgasms of my life. Pause to applaud massage parlors. That's not a real thing. Digress. He cleaned me up and finished the rest of the massage by rubbing my thighs and legs, which was still twitching with pleasure at that point. I paid up front, left her a good tip, and I'm super embarrassed. So I paid a woman to do that to me. First, I feel really tempted to go back soon. The post not clarity didn't last more than a couple days. Part of me really wants to go again. Dot dot dot, and that's the end of the thread. So love it because that's so like the hunt and like the, I want to live a life where unexpected hand jobs come my way, right? <laughs> but what kills me the most is when I down to the uh, to the comments below. But wait, how was this an accident? Actually, didn't happen by accident. She offered, and he nodded his sweet little head. So, right. I don't know where the accident came in, but the comments are hilarious. Suddenly, I need a cigarette. Now, my lower back is killing me. There's a parlor near my house. It's going and going. Guys are absolutely hysterical. They're all like applauding him for the best best hand job he's ever. Had. <laughs> well, hey, the skilled sex workers can't compete. You can't compete. Like, how boring is a hand job in regular life? But once you know how to really give a hand job, which we train people to do, it's yeah. it's a whole art form and a craft of itself. 
this I, I want I envy this man. Like he's embarrassed. And I'm like, please don't be embarrassed because no. I just I want to trade positions with you. What an experience though. And I mean, she's skilled, she's smart, right? She's giving a sensual massage, a relaxing massage, massage, and then just to pop the question, you want more? 50 bucks. Like bro. Right. Right. He's, he's, he's invested like regular client hook line and, and sinker. She's got him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would have been the same ball of putty for sure. Pitching a oh, tent yeah. and just as soon as she touched my testicles, I'd be like, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. yes, please. I don't often aspire to be a man the way you do, <laughs> but read or hearing that, because this is blind for me. I, I didn't know the Reddit thread that you had chosen. I was like, holy shit, that would be fun. It's so right. I would be panting and so excited too. I literally want to live a life where I can go for a massage and get my balls tickled. Like, I don't know how <laughs> balls, but I need to know what that feels like. I know you do. That is ah. too fun. <laughs> okay, I put a Twitter thread that I want to jump into. I'm going to read it for you. It awesome. says, companion question for companions. I'm new to being a companion, but it's something I really want to do. My only concern is how will it affect my feelings about men? I would mm. ask providers how their work challenges their feelings about men and in their relationships. Hmm. I love that. Yeah. I, I mean, I think my first thought or point about it is, Sex work isn't for everybody and that's okay. And it, it takes a certain mindset to be able to wrap your brain around having sexual acts or, or service with a client that is far different from having, you know, encounters with your husband or your partner. Um, so first really to analyze, like, is this something I can do? Because it, it's just simply not for everyone. It's so true. It's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone can handle the emotional baggage that it can come mm. with because I've said it so many times on the pod, clients divulge a lot of personal information and some people trauma dump even almost like yeah. it just kind of gets onto you and you have to go home and not just decompress, but still attend to your personal, personal life, personal sexual needs, personal intimacy, mm. self-care clearing your mind, all of the things. So it's uh, it's it's a labor intensive job in many regards, not just on your body, but but on your mind as well. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what some of the replies were like from other companions under that thread. If they were supportive, if they were man hating, if they were like, oh, no, I learned so much stuff and I love my life now. Yeah, I'm curious. Well, I, I think having a dual identity, which we've spoke about before, really is one of the ways I think you can do this job and separate who is doing which acts with who. And yeah. I'm not saying that's always easy to do, but being able to be Jane at work and Jane, you know, does A, B, and C with clients, but at home being Melissa, she's a very different, she can be a very different person. And yeah. that's the fun part about being in the industry. And I've said this to girls in training, even think about who. Riley's going to be you know put some thought into that because she can be as close to your true character as you would like her to be or as far from from your true identity as you want her to be she can be you know wild and swinging from the rooftops and, or the girlfriend experience or super cuddly or erotic which is completely not who you are like you can be a different person right. and I think if you can really play on having those dual identities it mentally is easier to to go home and, and, and be someone else. Yeah. It helps you compartmentalize. I think it helps you digest a little bit and, and the separation that's needed. I love that people can choose how close to their character or not that they can. Mm -hmm. I think our current staff is such a fabulous example of that because we currently have four girls that come from a Muslim family and backgrounds upbringing. We have one girl who's, who's Mormon we have one girl whose parents were um, Latter-day Saints and LDR. And so they've come from some pretty strict upbringings. Mm -hmm. And this is their absolute rebellion. And yet in their regular, regular days off, in their regular life, they still are as conservative as needed based on their, their family environment and stuff. And they get to kind of be rebellious at work. And I think, I mean, it's such an extreme that it's... 
fabulous. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have that kind of escape. And then you can still be the good girl the rest of the time, like <laughs> wholesome and innocent and, and all the things, but you'll build up some street smarts and, you know, a little bit of acting skills, some mm-hmm. comfortability for things in your future. I think it's really cool. <laughs> it is. And I think another way to really separate too, beyond just the identity is possibly reserving some practices that are for your personal life. So yes. what's an example of that? Um, kissing, for example, which is quite common now in, in our world. Um, mm-hmm. But if that's something, not that I want to encourage staff to be low mileage, but at the same time, if that's something that really is personal to you and that's something you reserve for your husband or your boyfriend partner, then don't do it at work. And maybe that's yeah. the way that you can separate who you're being and what service you're giving. Yeah, I think it really helps people separate the two um, and what's work and what's not without without almost overexposing yourself to something that you might really enjoy in your personal life. There are some things that took me a long time after I retired to start liking again in my personal life. There's still a couple things that I don't like that I used to like before I worked in the biz that, mm-hmm. I, that I still don't. We'll save that for a different Patreon episode for sure. Because <laughs> it's all dirty. Um, but I also think like the question in that thread was also about how it made you feel about men. And I think regardless of the quality of the encounter, I feel like I personally learned so much from from almost every customer I met, even if it was a bad session, even if it was a customer that wasn't really a good connect with me or a good fit. I learned more about myself. I learned about how men tick and what they like and why they like it. And I think how you decide to interpret that information is really a choice. I think as sex workers, we see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so you can decide to say, well, all men cheat or all men are like this or all men will fuck a whatever if they could or just name a price or some kind of like belittling almost of of the industry. Or you can leave with the empathy that men are truly out there just craving connection and really genuinely not just want to be heard, but need it. And if they find that solace with with a provider and a companion, then amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. The world is already a better place at that point. Um, And I I hope that most girls don't leave jaded. I hope most of them learn to love men and appreciate men because they are so special. We talk about this on our, our men's appreciation episodes. I would hate for someone to leave and think, all men are just Johns and Johns are like this and that, and, and just be kind of tainted by, by the whole thing. I think you can leave almost the opposite effects where you can like cherish and appreciate and celebrate men better because of what you've learned and been exposed to. Really? Yeah. So true. And I think being, it, it teaches girls how to be a good partner. It teaches them what's needed to avoid, not to say that men coming to massage parlors are bad, but how to avoid right. your partner coming through our doors, you're going to learn how to be sensitive to their sexual needs. We learn so much just in, in, as women in our <laughs> industry. I mean, the girls learn a lot about men. So yeah. to go into the business and, you know, you're not sure what to expect. I guarantee you come out having a better understanding of men and how to be a good partner in your future. It's so true. It's so true. What a blessing. What an unexpected blessing. I think it's it's so cool. We're always uh, fighting the stigmas and assumptions, but that is such a perfect way to put it because there are those beautiful moments and, and those life lessons that you take. And it literally just breaks it down to human connection. The, mm-hmm. the nakedness is irrelevant when it comes to that because y- you don't have those kind of opportunities with too many career choices to, to yeah. get those kind of interpersonal connections with people. For it's sure. just beautiful. I love it. As we know, I love men. I love that thread because it's uh, it's an interesting question to pose, especially to a global community, which Twitter is, right? A- across mm-hmm. a vast experiences that, that different companions will have. So very interesting. I love a curious newbie too. I love that she's yeah. like, I really want to do this. Help me figure it out. I love yeah. that. Love that. <laughs> and if you guys come across Reddit or Twitter, any kind of things along these lines that you want us to kind of talk about or discuss, send them our way. Participate. We want to them and, and chat about them with you. I love it. I love when we get uh, listener viewer input because it, it brings like to light some of the points that they're thinking about while they're listening to our pod. And that's awesome. 
perspective. Cool. Well, I think that wraps up this episode. That was a fun one. It was sweet and simple. <laughs> well, I thank you it. for joining us, guys. Absolutely. Moral of the story is get to a parlor. <laughs> Get thee to Muse if you're local. Get thee to a parlor if you're not. Support your local workers and uh, enjoy yourselves while you're at it. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video. Follow us on all social media. You can find those in the caption below. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Muse on the Mic. Bye. Bye. Bye.